The Corpse Bride Once upon a time, in a charming fishing town by the sea, there lived a timid young man named Reuven. He was known for his kindness, but his confidence was as elusive as a fish in the sea. In contrast, his girlfriend Eliza had a natural charm that could light up the entire town. Congratulations! Someone's getting married! Mr. Ezra, the amiable owner of the town's trinket shop and Reuven's boss, couldn't resist the opportunity to tease him. What are you going to give her the ring, my boy? Uh, ring? T to Eliza? Are you two gossiping about me? Only good things, my dear. Your friend's ring was quite exquisite. Mm-hmm. Must be nice to be married. I've always wanted a dreamy proposal. Flustered, Reuven blushed and made a hasty exit, closely followed by Mr. Ezra. Reuven, what's bothering you? Mr. Ezra, I want to propose to Eliza, but what if I'm not good enough for her? Reuven, do you love her? Yes, I'd do anything to see her happy. Then, my boy, you are more than good enough. Love is a precious gift, and you should treasure it. Reuven's heart swelled with newfound determination. That very evening, he set off to visit the town's jeweler. The very next day, Eliza saw Reuven at the jeweler's. Finally! Reuven nervously selects the perfect ring amidst the dazzling collection. But Eliza catches him in the act. Finally! For me? What else do you have up your sleeve? Mm, uh, Eliza? Would you like to, to, uh, uh, go out for lunch? Oh, sure. At the restaurant, Reuven summons the courage to propose. Will he propose here? Eliza, will you m m m m maybe like some ice cream? Oh, fine. Despite his best efforts, Reuven's nerves get the better of him. The day passes with failed attempts to propose, leaving Reuven disheartened. In the end, he walks Eliza home, dejected. Then, he makes a choice that will change his life forever. I couldn't muster up the courage to propose. <sighs> no number of stars could ever equal my love for you. Will you, Eliza, take me, Reuven, to be your husband? As Reuven practices his proposal, he suddenly hears a rustling sound and turns around. The branches of the tree seem to twist and turn, and from within emerges a pale figure in a tattered wedding dress. It's a corpse bride, Matilda. You got my name wrong. I'm not Eliza. I'm Matilda. I'm so happy we're married. Huh? Aw, my hubby's so forgetful. See, you married me. M married? Oh, I must tell the others. To his horror, the world around him shifts, and Reuven finds himself descending into the underworld with Matilda by his side. W w where am I? Ooh. Huh? Ooh. Oh. No, no. Uncle David! Aunt Petunia! Oh! Hey, kiddo! Is that a ring? Yep, I'm married. It was the spookiest wedding ever. To, to whom? whom? Him. The two ghostly figures gawk at Reuven. But, Matilda, he's alive! His skin is so plump! He's even got all his fingers! Ha ha ha! 
Ha ha. Hubby is so excited. Won't you all congratulate the newlyweds? Congrats! Oh. Reuben, horrified by everything, was now desperate to escape. Don't hurt me. Reuben? Huh? Reuben found himself facing his dear late grandmother. He had loved her deeply when she'd been alive. G Grandma, is it really you? Yes, my dear. I never thought I'd see you again. My little sparrow, why you're here? Reuben wasn't afraid of his grandmother. Instead, he found comfort in her presence and proceeded to explain his extraordinary situation. Well, you're in a fix. It's a catastrophe. Let's go find your new wife. <laughs> Grandma, <sighs> everything's so eerie down here. Reuven, remember, everyone here was once alive. They're not so scary once you get to know them. Hmm. The two trotted back. Hubby, you're back. I missed you. Eh? Son, we're sorry if we scared you. We were just excited. Reuven, looking at the friendly ghosts in a new light, realizes that perhaps there's more to this underworld than he initially thought. Matilda, you cannot marry a living person. Well, he married me. He needs to return to the land of the living. Matilda's eyes shone. Please, Reuven, take me up to the land of the living. Reuven was torn between his promise to Matilda and his responsibilities in the living world. But I must return home. Reuven agreed reluctantly. Yay! Is that a good idea? I need to find a way to break this marriage. Reuven embarked on a journey through the winding tunnels, his heart heavy with the weight of his commitment to Matilda. What do we do first? Well, I think we should go shopping. Reuven led Matilda through the town. Luckily, there were few people around. However, he suddenly spotted Eliza. Oh no, not now. Hmm, Reuven? He guided Matilda through some dark alleys, trying to avoid Eliza's attention. Huh? Soon, they found themselves shopping for clothes. How much fashion has changed? Isn't this lovely? Perhaps a larger one or something even prettier? Over there, maybe? As they left, Eliza spotted them again. Reuven! Reuven seized Matilda's arm and hurried off with Eliza in hot pursuit. Reuven, wait! I, I can't avoid her for long. Seeking refuge in the trinket shop, Reuven and Matilda tried to catch their breath. Wow, how pretty! Oh, what's this? She picked up the raindrop pendant. It had a tiny rose garden inside. Why does this feel so familiar? I think we're safe here. Reuven attempted to sneak Matilda out, but he accidentally bumped straight into Eliza. Reuven, why are you sneaking around? And who is this? She's... she's... Upon closer inspection, Eliza jumped back in shock. Oh, she's... she's a corpse. Hmm, the name's Matilda, and I'm not Reuven's friend. I'm his wife. What? It... it was an accident. Reuven hastily explained the unusual situation to a bewildered Eliza. You married a corpse when you couldn't even propose to me? Your living girlfriend? Girlfriend? Well, you didn't win. This isn't a competition. Eliza, I must find a way to end this marriage. That's not happening. Renounce your marriage to him. Nuh-uh. Our marriage is final. There must be a way. Unless I join the ghostly book club in the beyond. Uh-oh. Really? Then do it. I don't want to be ghosted. Matilda began to cry. <laughs> I have friends in the underworld. In the ghostly club, I'll have no one. 
Matilda shared her tragic story. In her living days, she had a lover who'd promised her the moon. But on her big day, he decided to pull a disappearing act, and she ended up with a broken heart instead of a wedding ring. I've been sporting this bridal attire for ages, turning heads in the spirit world, and still no groom in sight. Eliza was moved by Matilda's tragic story. Matilda, you can't swipe Reuven away, but we'll help you uncover your past lover. What? Yes, or at least what happened to him. Maybe then you'll feel at peace. But, but no one will follow my stories after I ghost this place. We'll remember you. Matilda was touched by their words. Spill the ghostly scoop on your lover? It's been so long. My memory is like an ancient cobweb. He was a legendary sailor, richer than a pirate's dream. He'd shower me with treasures and... And? He had a heart-shaped mole under his nose. All right then, that's our lead. Or so they thought. They went around for days, trying to find Matilda's past lover. They even turned to Mr. Ezra for help. Do you know of any wealthy sailors from back in the day? Rich sailors? All our sailors live humble lives. Better ask them instead of me. Reuven decided to do just that. You know what just crossed my mind? He went by the name Red Rose Sailor. They asked the sailors, but no one seemed to recall such a figure. <sighs> We've looked everywhere. Let's wait for Reuven. We'll try again. Reuven had gone to visit Mr. Ezra, who was ill. He saw how worried Reuven was. Reuven, don't worry about me. Your focus should be on tying the knot with Eliza. What's the holdup? Ah, uh, I'm working on it. When you find love, seize it without hesitation. I, too, was once in love, but missed my chance. He started coughing violently, so Reuven left him to rest. As their quest trudged on, Mr. Ezra's health steadily deteriorated. Until one fateful day... I'll just visit my... <coughs> Reuven rushed into Mr. Ezra's home, followed by Matilda and Eliza. He was alarmingly pale. <coughs> Reuven, come here. Oh, Mr. Ezra. Shh. I wish to tell you something. Years ago, I missed the chance to marry the love of my life. She was a woman of spirit who loved roses and rain. Roses and rain? Aye, I was a sailor from foreign shores and I proposed to her, but fate swayed me away from that moment. Oh no! When I returned to these shores, she had already departed this world. This pendant, I intended it as a gift for her. Hold on, what was her name? Matilda. Ezra? Mr. Ezra stared at Matilda in shock. Tears came to his eyes as Eliza and Reuven explained everything to him. After all this time, you still love me? I have always loved you. I even finished the pendant. I saw it when it was only half done. Mr. Ezra suddenly felt tired. I think it's my time to go. Well, then it's time for me to be your plus one, Ezra. Matilda had made up her mind, and thus the two were finally together. Reuven, I'm sorry for troubling you. Thank you for everything you've done for me. You are now free to marry Eliza. We'll always remember you. Reuven, make it official with her. Reuven and Eliza bade them goodbye. After all that, Reuven finally proposed to Eliza, and they had a marvelous wedding. Finally? <laughs> you know... It's still odd how he never knew Mr. Ezra was a famous sailor. If he was from another land, he wouldn't be famous here, and he traded his riches for a simple life. Oh, what about the heart-shaped mole? Reuven took out his wallet. There lay a picture of Mr. Ezra without his mustache. Bingo! Everything he did was to be near Matilda. All for love, just like us. With Matilda and Mr. Ezra's memory close to their hearts, Eliza and Reuven learned the most valuable lesson of all. 
sees love when it's knocking at your door.